to split this one? <laughs> All right. I got my brother John in town. For a fishing trip, we're all going brother. spearing. We got all the old Minnesota boys in Denver. In out of Telluride, Colorado, 9,200 feet in the mountains. Ranch manager. Yeah, Disneyland in the mountains, as I put it. 27 years for the most beautiful family. Running a uh, world-class playland for a millionaire. We won't use the name. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Trophy yeah. Trout Pond, world class sporting clays range. General Schwarzkopf was one of the best and told me that um, he's shot all over the world, shot with presidents, and shot on private islands, and it's his favorite course. Just pretty puts, puts it right up there. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. What's fun about that shooting that one is if you're having fun at a station, there's no one coming behind you. You own it. Yeah. Stay there all day. No move on. Duck tower for me, but yeah. that's what I dig. Yeah. Eight pound rainbows in a trout, teaching little kids how to fish. Instant gratification. <laughs> yeah, Pretty that's where they get place. That's where they get trained in. I could spend uh, an hour on this one. Seven miles of trails, <clears throat> old mining trails. There's two miles of mine shafts underneath the property. And of course, we've been in them. 9,200 feet? Yeah. Matter of time, I always tell people, it's a matter of time if you elk hunt up there that you're gonna step out on the deck in your underwear and shoot your elk and then go back in and finish your coffee. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, gosh, I wish I could show the video of 500 elk in the front yard on the neighbor's property. And I've got Cliff, Brown from Laguna Beach, California, with his two sons who are total surfers. And these kids, it's it's fall, it's cold, and they're in their shorts, no shirts, and totally buff, six-pack kids, you know. Mm. And uh, they can't stand it looking at the elk. And I'm watching football going, let me know when they cross the second fence. Yeah. Then, then you're legal to shoot. Here they come, here they come. Okay, just, just relax. <laughs> are they on the second fence? Yeah, but imagine 500 elk coming to you. Yeah, and uh, finally they cross this. Now I'm okay. I want to be on each deck. Lay down in your shorts, and and get ready. You got to take a bull. Make sure there's not a cow behind it because these new guns will shoot through two elk, and we don't want anything wounded. And uh, a 500 elk come in. They all do broadside. There's a bull. There's a bull. There's 50 bulls. It's generally 10 to one. Uh, one in 10 is a bull, and. Um, 500 in the front yard and nobody gets a shot the whole herd turns and leaves and then cameron goes i got a bull by itself i said kill it and he shoots it drops it dead perfect we go out there and on the way i'm looking going oh my god yeah it has to be four by four or six inch brow tines it was three by four and six and an eighth inch brow time <laughs> so it was like it's the ugliest bull we've ever shot on the ranch in 27 years but he got a bull and they're meat bull. eaters so he took it but yeah that's the ranch yeah lifetime that's, memories incredible that's my old saying i'm a i'm a good cook particularly with the wild game but I have yet to come up with a good recipe for an antler <laughs> there you go yeah, you can't perfect. crock pot it long enough yeah, yeah that's it no, nah, I love the meat eaters. We got enough trophies on the ranch. Yeah. And they went to the right people, which yeah. is cool. So. Last time I put in for a cow just so we could all have some meat. Oh, and that I just I watched. probably would have drawn a bull. Yeah. 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 But yeah, after a while it doesn't matter and you start out with I want to shoot super far, you know, and then once you get over 5 and 600 yards, I think you should turn the other way and go, how close can I get and do archery? And that yeah. was my favorite. When you see eyelashes and could smell their breath, now you're hunting. Yeah. Well, John well. Moores, who has now mastered long range, thousand yard shooter, and he's a suede shoe Newport boy to begin with, and just took on the 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 outdoor life and and he's so good. Whatever he tries, he does. And then this last trip he came out, got to go by himself, six hundred yard shot, get his own elk, 
he called me and I said, got it. He said, okay. <laughs> so he did everything. And then when we got done and we had dinner, he goes, I want to try archery. I'm like, yeah, had a boy. Buddy. He'll be great. I brought him right out in the garage, had him draw my bow back. And he's just like, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, that takes a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, I want to work on the delts. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the. Yeah. He'll do it. Yeah. He'll get it. Yeah. Well, that, that video I did uh, just playing with that bull. I just watched on, it. On my last trip. Yeah. 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 I tell people that, that I got back to the back to your house and said, I got a nice video of a bull. And Tanner asked if I got into archery range. And I said, I got into nine iron range. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's really? That's the best. Because he just was screaming and then back to dinner and kind of didn't care and yeah uh, uh, it, was it was a perfect almost, call just yeah teaser yeah yeah it's almost the video you want to show someone and they ask how should i call a bull in yeah right you there. Know, here this is how you do it yeah don't don't beat him up with it that's like <clears throat> you did a cow call and a lot of people want to master the bugle and i go listen the bugle's all good but the fighting is only sporadic here and there. And it's, and that's when it's good. Yeah. And then you're going to over bugle. And if you sound like Schwarzenegger coming in, this guy's well, like, I don't want to fight that. I'm out of here. Yeah, exactly. Got to do a little squeak in it and sound like a 19 year old cocky sound guy. Like you can get your ass kicked. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that was, uh, once again, the, uh, California kid Cameron, he's a world-class surfer, longboard surfer. And in his first hunt ever on the ranch, he had more encounters with odd things than I've had in 27 years. Maybe. Yeah, mountain lion. But yeah, sitting in a tree stand. And I said, do a cow call every once in a while. Every five minutes, 10 minutes, and look around. And he mm -hmm. called in a mountain lion. People just don't do that. Or they don't even know they've done it. Yeah. Because they're so stealthy. Then came in and growled at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've said that. How many times have we been watched by mountain lions? Exactly. A hundred times. Well, yeah, that's uh, tell old cowboys from Telluride would say that. I've been here 30 years. I've never seen one. I said, they've seen you. A lot. And, that, and that's the truth. Yeah. And Cameron also uh, climbed the stair machine, which is this hour and a half climb up a mountain. It's a wicked climb. Um went up there at noon and was going to take a nap i said spend the day there have lunch and then the evening hunt will be great you'll already be there and he said i set up my camera and i was doing bugles and then i'd go look at it and i'd turn it so wilson was better in the background and bugle again he said on the fourth one i looked and here came a bull running in <laughs> his yeah. bow's way over there he's on video <laughs> with himself <laughs> oh, that kid's something else man that mountain lion one where I'd, uh, I went out, it was in California, just practice calling coyotes and bobcats and stuff. And, um, <clears throat> came over this hillside and I had a shady hillside. So I was stashed pretty good calling out to this field and I got four coyotes to come and I had them at several hundred yards. And that's when I used to carry that whole quiver of calls. Yeah. I could do whining puppies and yeah. whatever. Yeah. It got down to that once where I tried every call I could do. And it just, they were stuck out there. And I was like, what else can I do? And the only sound I had left was a whining puppy. And I did it and it, it brought them in. But this didn't even work on them. They were sitting out there and they were pacing and barking back at me. And uh, it's like, well, okay, I don't know what the deal is. I had the wind right. Mm -hmm. I know I was stashed. And I turned around, walked back up the trail that I came in on, and like 35 feet behind me, there was a mountain lion track on my boot print. Perfect walking down they were watching that so watching the, you watching yeah. them <laughs> and the, and i got i got a mountain lion behind me i'm screaming like a dying rabbit and he's looking at the back of my neck god bless them that they're so smart <laughs> i know you must have just because bobcats aren't quite and they attack people <laughs> that would have been killer just a couple thrashes yeah just get, get a I always wanted a big bite from a a, a shark don't want to be done. Yeah. Double here would even be, I'd wear yeah. that good. The modeling career's over now. A little break in the beard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that would be perfect. odd. 
Yeah. Dueling scar. Love it. Love it. So many hunt stories. It's crazy. Going back to, uh, that's one that I tell about big Jim Wagner who was our John Wayne of our group mm -hmm. and, uh, Alaska moose hunt and they shoot a moose. They got it. They put it, put it in the boat. They spend the night, they get up in the morning and leave. And dad says, big Jim says, where's my rifle? And Bob goes, it's your gun. Why, why are you asking me? And he said, oh, damn it. I left it at camp. It's a float trip. You can't go back. He said, we'll get it next year. So I remember where it was because uh, of the campsite. They go back the next year. There's the gun. The leather's eaten off it a bit. Gun's fine. A little rusted. Um, but he goes, I remember it because there was this big curved log we sat on. Yeah. And they started looking at the log, and it was a mammoth tusk. Yeah. Paid for the trip. It's just like. Come on, yeah, I think seventeen hundred bucks, yeah, which was forty years ago, yeah, but still, and I think it's still in the museum at the airport in Alaska. That's so, so cool. that's what Bobby said, yeah. But then our stories, it's just so cool, and and to sit around and tell stories with kids that are thirteen, and I remember our group, I think had Grandpa was ninety or ninety something, Grandpa Wagner, yeah, and then the youngest kid I think was. Um, was our little race car driver andy andy yeah mm -hmm. andy and he was like 13 and every kid has a story with enthusiasm mm -hmm. 13 years old yeah how many stories can you have but they do especially farm kids mm -hmm. you know city kids. well the big gym stories off the charts yeah there's so many of them off the charts that's so i try to describe him to people and tell those stories yeah. and he's a big husky guy and he he made a beer can look like one of those little <laughs> v8 cans yeah. and i always say if you dropped him off in alaska in the fall and came to get him in the spring he will have built a house gained weight started gained weight. a family perfect <laughs> yeah, he would exactly have, he would have found some kind of wife out there started a yeah. family yeah, yeah right? and it just actually, thrive uh, what did he do? He, he, uh, what was that story of, uh, there was really bad weather and they were doing that same float trip <clears throat> and they came over with the plane and said, yeah. no meat. Don't, you can't pack. You would need to get out now. There's a storm coming. It's going to be frozen. I won't be able to get you till spring. And he said, no, take everybody and the meat. And if you come back and you can pick me up fine, otherwise come get me in the spring. Yeah. It's a true story, and who would say that? Yeah. And to the to years later, he said, "God, I really wished it would have happened. Yeah. He'd have been fine. He would have been. been all the above what Tell you just me said. Exactly. God. Yeah. yeah. The time he walked up to the river bank with his fishing pole, and he just reached under, yeah. felt around, and came out with a frog. Yeah. How did you know there was a frog right there? Exactly. Yeah, he would have had a new beaver jacket and yeah. all kinds of nice stuff." Take that frog, catch a fish. Just like out of the then movie. Then bait a bear with the fish yeah, and exactly, kill the bear. Yeah. Work your way up the food chain. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, it just like out of Fargo, he, they were heading to church. He saw a deer, shot it, put it in the trunk, took off, heading still to church, got pulled over, and there's kicking in the trunk. <laughs> and that's a true story. <laughs> Yeah, but he knows the game more and stuff. And it's like, Jim, <laughs> yeah. kill it. Well, I thought it was dead. Yeah. Love it. Oh, I think the game wardens were a little scared of him up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. They wouldn't even come and check our camp. Let that go. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Of uh, that 20 Cra years crazy. or whatever, I hunted it. Yeah. They never even no, pulled I, in. Same thing. Never saw one. Mm mm. No. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, we got Laguna Days surfing. Yeah, surfing, my new and sport. I just love it. It's so good for your heart and soul and 
for a square head from Minnesota, geez, you took it on way before me and mastered it. And mm. if it can be mastered, but, uh, uh, yeah, Cam's a master. I, I got good. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. 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 There's a photo of him. Um, I think it made surfer magazine or whatever the big magazine is. And he's on his longboard standing on the nose backwards praying and looking up as he's going down a wave it's just Sweet. like yeah to see the finesse in those guys and that's what i'm trying to master quit walking like an elephant and yeah uh, this last trip i starting to get there i got five sessions in in cabo recently and that's what i do i watch people and see how they do it yeah and there's guys too you know women are obviously you know more sleek and and ballerina like uh, but man, to watch guys do that and big, heavy guys too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sand Matt Frick. McCullough. Yeah, exactly. There Dude you go. was, yeah. A round he was human. He was great. Yeah, he looked yeah. like, a, like a beach ball. Yeah. He, he was graceful. Yeah, on a exactly. Longboard. Yeah. Oh, I just need more women time. though. That women that longboard well, yeah. that's, that's sexy to 100%. watch. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Now that's what I want a month or two months in some place with the long wave where you can have time to do it yeah oh i think surfing is just too too cool got a board in cabo and a board in laguna beach and just need more time i floundered last time but we got the shark story out of the deal yeah that's been yeah. fun I tell people that I, my instinct was to chase the great white shark spin it out Spinning it. That was like, awesome. That was uh, San Onofre. Yeah, trails. And me, you, and, the, and the my boy. The southernmost trail, and we had, yeah, Cam. Wasn't Cam there that day, though? I think so. Maybe Cam and Cliff. But Cliff was on shore and watch. Yeah. And Cliff, I don't think, was there, but Scott LaSalle was up on the beach. Oh, that's right, because he was talking to the Yeah, with the sheriffs. telephoto lens. Yeah. Yeah, and so waiting for sets out there with you and the water was nice and clear and you pointed and said shark and then it went right underneath me that dorsal fin just about hit my foot 10 foot great white yeah not huge and, but big enough oh big enough, big enough yeah. to kill you yeah and my instinct was just to spin the board and follow him and followed as long as i could and then he scurried off and and when i tell people that story then they always think think that's so crazy i'm like if he was hunting me i never would have seen him coming yeah it would have just blown me out of the water there would have been screaming and red foam it would have been over you know but then the follow-up part of that with jake i I was gonna say yeah later when we talked to to jake and he he's so soft-spoken around us and we were kind of my son we were it was 15 at the time yeah we kind of run him over with our stories and stuff but didn't you hear me say that baby seal jumped on my board and so the baby seals running from the great white jumps on his board to escape the bait and then we find out and scott wasn't filming but he was watching through the telephoto lens watching jake paddle out with the shark following him that's what the sheriff's up on the cliff said too yeah yeah well yeah and then halfway up when i met those there was four of those guys yeah. with their big binoculars and yeah. i said hey guys what's up and the one says we had a report of a great white and i said i'll confirm it yeah. and then we told them the story and they were just shaking their heads yeah. and you stayed out there couldn't be no, any. i followed it yeah couldn't be any worse for i a dad to have his son tell you that oh. if he followed and that's what either i thought the sheriff had said that yeah it went around you guys then it followed that young kid all the way in and back out again so it was following jacob oh. with the seal on his board shave <laughs> another near mess that was yeah that was no, a good one shark stories i i i was fishing with bill we were there with the great white uh-uh. and uh and a lady's freaking out on the radio and i said what's the problem there's not a problem but there's a giant great white shark and it's eating a whale 
I'm like, whoa, where are you? So we go there. And there's two boats po pointing straight in on a giant bloated dead whale, uh, belly up. And the belly of a whale is corrugated, like roofing. Mm -hmm. And she's like, just wait, just wait. And this thing comes in. It's huge. It's six feet across. We actually measured it when I went by the boat, 18 foot great white. And it's going in and taking three foot bites out of the whale. It would grab onto it, spin its body and corkscrew a piece off and then you know, go deep, get it in its gullet and come back and do it again. And after half hour, I said, you guys back off, put me on the whale so I could take pictures of this shark. And I stood seven feet away and got photos of, mm -hmm. of 18 foot great white. And even Schwarzkopf, he punched me in the shoulder and he goes, you have kids, you shouldn't do stuff like that. Yeah. And I go, you don't understand. It was like super stable. It, it's your almost four feet off the water to be honest it's not like it, was gonna, it wasn't gonna up. roll over because you got on and it he's got what 10 tons of food he doesn't want me yeah it's it's people freak out on sharks and i think sharks are one of the coolest things ever they haven't had to change in a million years mm -hmm. they're so perfect perfect eating machine they mm -hmm. cruise around and do what they do people mm -hmm. swim with them now and grab onto them and everything it's not mm -hmm. it's not like a pit bull you yeah. know it's not this thing that's fenced in and pissed off not that all pit bulls are, but you know they're they're just a giant perfect machine out there having the, doing their own thing. Yep. Freaking Jamie out when we I think his first fishing trip. Remember that? And we Laguna? were oh yeah we were shark fishing. Had a chum line going all morning. Never saw a fin. Never got a bite. And I hatched this plan just <laughs> to freak him out and. And yeah, Minnesota guy, born and raised, and never left there. But known since grade I school. Grabbed that jug of cow blood and dumped it over my head, and then jumped in and thrashed around. And he just freaked him out, and then rinsed my hair out and stuff. And we got a laugh out of it. And as I'd no sooner planted my feet in the boat, and a seven foot blue went right under where I was. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> the way to chum them in. <laughs> yeah, right. That's awesome. And that would have been the best bite ever. They don't yeah. have big teeth, but it would have been a decent scar. <laughs> yeah, a trophy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love it. I dispute that when I swear to God I did that. Mm. Unless we both did it. Mm -mm. Could that be? That's uh -uh. so funny. You no, know, I remember hatching the plan and told you what I was going to do. And I just and I think you got the camera ready. So somewhere there's a photo of me drenched in that's blood. Awesome. That's a good one. That's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah, the memory loss. But maybe that's and, switching around. Maybe now I'm telling stories that I swear putting myself God, in your place. I swear to God, I did it. <laughs> Whatever, I'll give you that one. I let's find the photo. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, would be awesome. We might have we might have hit the point where we were telling each other stories. Well, as you get older, you know, it's like fish stories. They get bigger. Everything gets better. My son busts me on stuff like that. Dad, I'm yeah. like, what? He's just keep quiet. The shark that <laughs> swam flowing. under me was twelve <laughs> feet, but I yeah. guess it was ten now. <laughs> and I had yeah, that great white, Bill made sure. When it went by the boat, he goes, Nels, tell me when the tail hits the back of the boat. And he was walking forward and marking the nose. So I knew it was 18 feet. And everybody goes, 18 feet's gigantic. And I go, I know, I yeah. know, but it was. And I'll show you the photo. I got the yeah. photo, you can tell. It was six feet across, it was huge. That's so and then cool. I got to, um, down in Mexico, Bill Wilson uh, had, um, Wilson underwater mm -hmm. and he did really good videos and I think some even made it like National Geographic or you know TV stuff mm -hmm. but he needed footage of um, uh, striped marlin and he said go in with me we're down in Mexico off the Gordo Bank and um, I had my spear gun and he goes you watch my back for sharks and stuff a lot of hammerheads down there and there was a, a um, bait ball and there were seven striped marlin circling it. And they'd go in, and it was just unbelievable how uh, the finesse, and they go in one at a time, and they whoo, 
bill a few and they get to eat them and the other guys keep the ball together once you're done eating you get back in line and help your buddies and yeah. i'm watching this thinking i got a spear gun everybody else has a sword that's three feet long i felt like nothing in there yeah. looking at these things that are not twice as long as me but easily as long or better mm -hmm. but oh my god i want to contact him and get that oh some killer footage because mm. he did that he did the bait ball and i'm in the background a little bit and mm. super cool the underwater things that we've done oh that's another one i tell about uh that blue water diving out in the middle of nowhere yeah. you know 15 miles off of shore in shipping lanes yeah and this and so tactic being just there's kelp floating across the, yeah, kelp, the ocean kelp bed yeah yeah so in it typically it, it might not be any bigger than than just this area right here but it might have a long tail off it small bait balls up in there and then the bigger fish and then the bigger fish the whole food chain and it's so deep i mean Fathoms, you can't even you, yeah, you, you can't even fathom how deep it is and there's no backdrop so you can't tell how deep you're looking mm -hmm. but you drive by and you see if there's schools of fish on it typically yellowtail or dorado yeah and if there is you gear up you got these six foot rife spear guns triple band yeah. and when i like that describing it to people I'm an old arm wrestler, you know, and I'd, I'd pull those bands down and be like, there's three of them, you know, and you get to right there and you're like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then roll off the back of the boat and the boat leaves. And I say, that's when you never felt so insignificant in there's your life. A speck. Yeah. Yep. The old saying that yeah. surfers have that when you get in the ocean, you're at the bottom of a whole new food chain. Yeah. That's and good. That's perfect well put yeah that's what it feels like it, yeah. i always say you feel like a june bug on a trout pond perfect. yeah <laughs> and so and then right when i get in and i'm like doing the look around and a big mako does a backflip by me Bitch. so mako shark which looks just like a miniature gray yes, white they do yeah. and uh it took me a second to just calm down i'm usually pretty good in water and <laughs> and wear that five pounds of weight or so, so you can go down and hang. Yeah. And I'm doing, I'm doing the search around still and trying to relax. Finally, just, okay, hyperventilate a little bit, dive down, do the hang and the, and the tactic being the, the schools of fish. This was yellowtail. Yeah. And they go back and forth, but each time they turn, they're a little closer. Yeah and hold that gun up close to you and wait until they're in range and slide it up and i'm down there doing the weight and they're doing their thing and now i'm in the zone i'm relaxed and i look behind me and there's a giant moolah snuck up Sweet. right in my blind spot yeah and you know it's just i screamed in my snorkel bubbles everywhere Gotta explain what a moolah is you, it's shaped like a sunfish but it's 200 pounds it's huge prehistoric looking yeah. thing and they move super fast. slow but when you see them you're just like oh god yeah, that's and he, awesome. I, who knows where he came from but he came up in the most blind side down and behind me yeah yeah and their eyeballs that big and when they go yeah. by you you can see them looking yeah. at you they yeah, look yeah, you yeah. head to toe Tanning. yeah it looks like a big camera they do they do a big old circle around the kelp patty is constantly doing yeah. their feeding on microplankton or whatever and couldn't have snuck up on me every better every time every time and it's that deal like you said of calming down all of a sudden you just go and you commit to i could get eaten whatever i'm just going to enjoy this could mm -hmm. be my last moment it's going to be my best moment mm -hmm. and, but that moolah every time you're just like oh there he is again yeah uh, super we'll cool. talk about Jamie. I got a picture of Jamie with a moolah. No way. We were out diving and a moolah came oh. up. Um, yeah. So and I, I talked to him. We had those cheapo underwater disposable cameras. Yeah. I said, James, dive down. And he, he dove down and 
did one of these with the big moolah behind Now that him. you did that, I remember the photo. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's killer. Mm-hmm. God bless you, Jamie. We miss you. <laughs> and teaching him out on Catalina Island to, uh, how to work a Hawaiian sling. Yeah. Lobsters? It, well, we were just, just doing how to work fish. fish. I hate to say what I shot, but <laughs> um, I said, you showed him how it worked. And I said, just follow me, stay really close to me. And I dove down and this came up over some rocks, already aiming. And sure enough, in, in sight of whack. And I could hear him laugh oh, no. <laughs> through a snorkel, just bust out laughing. It's like, a hunt. Take it's it. a different hunt. Being from mm -hmm. Minnesota, you know, and all our friends, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. We were the little Huck Finns of the world and, and growing up on the Minnesota River and hunting everything and never forget hitting Laguna Beach at, I don't even know how old I was when I left, 22. Mm -hmm. And and uh, yeah, get in the ocean and go underwater. It's it's another forest of a different kind, mm -hmm. everything. I remember finding a um, crab, great big crab. His body was like this with his legs, he was like that. And that was early days, Hawaiian slain. I went thunk, and I just bounced off, thunk, <laughs> yeah. and bounced off. And I'm like, what the hell? And I went back up, and I think it was Shane Dunlap. Shane, giant crab, how do I kill it? And he goes, just pick it up. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, ah, they, don't, they can't bite you. They don't do anything back. Yeah. All right. Note to self. <laughs> to self. <laughs> how to get a crab. <laughs> My best ever was uh, swimming with a uh, uh, whale shark, Ooh. bragging, unbelievable. Mm. Hang on to the dorsal fin of a whale shark and go for a ride. And you, it's like you're talking to him without talking. I remember it, it was uh, fishing. We got whatever, 100 pound tuna, big day with John Moores. And the captain, after, you know, we're doing beer and a cigar and heading back maybe 30 miles out off of uh, Cabo San Lucas. And the captain goes, whale shark. And everybody goes for your phone. Got to get a photo. And I'm mask, fin, snorkel. And I went up and I go, captain, go around in front, drop me off and get out of the way. And he did drop me off and I could see, here it comes. And on one of the down ones, I swam down and petted him around his eye and he just slowed down like, okay. And yeah, I so went cool. and grabbed on, and he just started cruising. I had white water coming off my shoulders, and he didn't porpoise. He just cruised. Yeah, he knew like you he were there. knew I couldn't hold my breath that yeah. long. And I remember getting back on. I was flagging him. Get in here. Come on. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, no way. <laughs> and when I get back on, they go, how does that? Why does that always happen to you? I go, it doesn't happen to me. That's my instincts to get in and do stuff with things like that. It's your instincts to take a photo of it. Yeah. So push it to the next level. I mean, you don't have to, but yeah. I think that's what life's about is that extra buzz. People say that about you all the time. Your brother's so lucky. Like, well, it depends what your definition of luck is. Thank you. If it's lucky, I didn't like, die a few times. Yeah. Preparedness meets opportunity. Yeah. You were ready with a mask and fins. Always and the opportunity showed yeah. up. Yeah. Out yeah. on John Moore's boat that day, we had that. That was the best fishing day for me. The marlin like, day? Yeah. 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 I hooked 13 marlin, landed eight, but rods were bent on every other species the whole time. Yeah. And I took a break at one point. You guys were all in the back fishing, and I went up and just walked out onto the bow and standing there just enjoying the the ocean and the smell and everything and take it in and this this whale comes up in front of me <laughs> and dives down and the tail goes right in front of me and i run to the back of the boat and I, you guys see that <laughs> what and just for you just for me and it never came back up bitching I'm like you'll see him you'll see. then i felt like a liar <laughs> yeah it was just for me john moores has showed me so many good times oh there's another one you could say, luck, but it's not. He's, yeah. he's the one that's out pushing it and doing it all the time, and I dig it. Make luck it was maybe him, me and him meeting. That could be luck, but uh, and that was actually on a boat, and 
he goes, I, he, the way he put it, I think, was, we haven't had a hunter in our family in 100 years. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And, and uh, Newport Beach, California. And he goes, and my son came to me and said, I want to hunt a deer. I'm like, you just met the right guy. I, I'll totally set that up for next year. And by the time I got done drinking, I'm like, no, oh, you need to come out this year. And he shot his first deer, and and uh, boy, I don't know how it's been 10, 12 years of him coming out and shooting elk every year. And mm -hmm. then we meet in Cabo, and our trips are off the charts. Jacob just gave me my Christmas present. It's this big, that blown up picture with me with the wahoo, with the wahoo. And, the, and the sunset in the back. Yeah. Uh, he goes, Dad, you don't have any pictures of you. It's a monster wahoo. Oh, God. Lifetime. Yep. And we did it two years in a row. The captain down there, they call him Captain Wahoo. He's the best Wahoo guide down there. And um, he, he, he said this year, he goes, you guys are the luckiest when it comes to Wahoo. Two years in a row, you've gotten the biggest Wahoo of the year with me. Mm -hmm. I've never had a triple hookup in Wahoo. And we did that. Wow. But, yeah. yeah. I've never been on a boat and caught one. Yeah, I've, I've never seen one landed. Only caught two in my life. Yeah, yeah. there it, it's uh, they're very interesting because everybody will tell you we hooked one up, but we didn't get it in. They're super smart. They're I think they can do sixty miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So when you're reeling them in, they can just pour on the gusto, and you can't keep up to them. And he uses a leader this big steel, and then he floors it while you're reeling. Sure. He keeps that thing tight the whole time. Mm -hmm. Super cool. I watched every bit of what he did. Very smart man. But uh, yeah, set your drag properly. But then you never have slack. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They come in. They do once with their teeth. They're just razor sharp. Yeah, oh, they're wicked. Off. Yeah. yeah, it's so cool. Well, that trip with Justin, Justin Lance, and you and me, yeah. John Moore's boat. Phoenix. Bahia Roca, we got to stay at. $30 and, million dollar house to stay at. Yeah. And this, so the, the night we went out in town and just decided to sleep on the boat. And yeah. every, yeah, I, well, how big was his boat? I know he had a 55 Viking, but I think that was the Phoenix. And I think it was 43 or 47. Mm -hmm. Well, we all had our own berth. Yeah. And I remember crashing out. And then in the morning, hearing the, the motors fire up and going, all right, crew's here. <laughs> We're heading out. Yeah, and then crash back out a little bit. And then you hear the motors idle up a little. And like, okay. We, they cut the motors back down. And I'm like, We're, okay, we're at the bait dock. <laughs> and it's just taking note, but not really waking up. Just, uh, That's living the we're, life. We're baiting up, and we're getting lunch and drinks and stuff. Motors idle up again, and then pretty soon the boat's rocking. I'm like, okay, we just left harbor. Now we're out. Yeah, we're out. And that was, that day was big. Big swells that day. And the sun wasn't up yet. Um, but the sky was just radical sunrise yeah, cool. unbelievable color and i was the first one up that morning and i walked through the galley poured a cup of coffee <laughs> took a sip walk out onto the you know fighting deck and say good morning to the guys and one of the rods just goes boom <laughs> <laughs> i was like well that must be mine and i set my coffee down catch the biggest dorado of my life and then it was just everything for the rest of the day. Everything but a wahoo, I think we caught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even got a uh, giant squid. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, God. And 13 so marlin, landed eight. That day I got the, the biggest marlin of the day on the smallest rig. Yeah. Maybe they did. Captain told him to snap it off. And yeah. I thought you were going to. Use it for guys, chum. After everybody's forearms were wore out, and I said, is that it? Are you done? I got to go in with my spear gun. And I went in, and I went right over a marlin, and I came down straight on top of him and was just going to do it. His head jerked to the right, and he took off. And I popped up in the other boat. The dudes, I got him. I'm hooked up. I'm oh, like, oh, man. You got to watch a hookup, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Huh. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the swell was so big, I actually started getting seasick, uh-huh. which never happens. Neither. And you supposedly, what's the new one they take? It's not Dramamine anymore. Yeah. But had some of that on the boat, and, and uh, I'd always heard, once you're sick, it's over. And that captain, one one good bit of advice, he goes, no, take it with sugar. So he gave me a Snickers bar and that 15 minutes later, I'm back in the game. But I remember going up top and watching, just watching the action for a while. And uh, Justin, he's such an animal. Yeah, yeah. He, he lands a fish, barfs, and grabs another pole and starts cranking in another one. Yeah. <laughs> so no the fishing was so him. good, he wouldn't even stop for yeah. that. I've never, ever been sick. Uh, and then this last trip, man, we were out, I think, 50 miles. And, uh, oh, it was gnarly. God. Mm. And I got queasy first time ever. But I've been in wicked seas. And for some reason, I got good sea legs. It just doesn't get to me. But Yeah, that's the only time for me. And that we went out in San Diego with, uh, remember, with Bill and uh, mm-hmm. his son. Mm-hmm. Riley. Uh, yeah, Riley, and he uh, he got sick, and then he was really down about it. You now, and, and I told him the trick. Mm-hmm. I found him a candy bar, and said, "Take this, back it up with this." And then twenty minutes later, he was Badass. back in the game. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what did you I... don't want to eat? Let See, alone that's a candy the funny bar. thing. I got to start eating on a boat first thing. Yeah. Well, and you should. Once I get my food in me, I'm good all day. If you're barfy, though, it's yeah, exactly. It's hard to choke down a Snickers bar. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. And you were surprised I had the White Castle lunchbox displayed. <laughs> Out of Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Came so with a nice Laguna Beach t-shirt it. in it. Right. Now I love your little pad. It's super cool. Full Nelson. Cozy. Mm-hmm. What else? Dirt biking? Yeah. There's, there's an endless... Oh gosh! Supply of stories, more exciting stuff than that. But dirt biking, yeah, because we couldn't have them when we were kids. We had to have them later. Yeah. And man, if we would have had them as we were kids, geez, think how good we would have been. Yeah, unbelievable. Colorado changed me moving there. Oh yeah, and getting back into it at forty, I was a better rider. Most people don't. I know. Yeah, they really no, they hung it up way before that. I was a better rider at 40 than 22. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. I recently said that at 62. I'm a better rider now than I've ever been. Uh, part of uh, the great Larry Raglan, off-road race car driver. I kept getting hurt. And he said, John, get in the back of the crowd. Uh, no more air. And don't chase the young kids. Simple application. I did it, and now I have more fun riding. I back down just a little bit on speed, and everything came easier. And yeah. now I have more fun, and I, I'm definitely a better rider because of it. Yeah. yeah, It's amazing, but Colorado, yeah, what a state. Yeah, it was a game changer with the, the challenging terrain. And it's funny that I was doing much more radical stuff, but less chance of getting hurt in a way. Sure. It was kind of smarter. Yeah. But what's There's, the what's the trail you took me on? The one that goes around the dark timber behind your house at Sunshine. Uh, Wilson Mesa Trail. That's Wilson Mesa. Phenomenal. Single track. That technical. Is, that was my favorite stuff. Serious right there. riding. Yeah. Yeah. Not crazy. Uh, how many creek crossings? Oh, I think there's seven water features. <laughs> water feature. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. 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 And so That's you, my backyard, you took man. off and said i'll i'll stop at the end wait for you which uh well that showed some faith that i was going to make all those creek (laughs) crossings but those the bridges for the 
the mountain bikers. Yeah. So it's two parallel logs lashed together. <laughs> yeah. And you can actually use it, but you don't try and ride across it. And what? it was like, I didn't know any of this. It was just like, yeah. I'll see you there. And you turned yeah. me loose. That's the way you started me with yeah. snorkeling, too, at the bob holes. <laughs> Get in. But, yeah, go. <laughs> but line yourself up, crack that front wheel up, and then focus at the other bank 100%. where you're, where you're going to drop Look your front it. wheel. Yeah. And, yeah. and just pay no attention to where the, your back one is. And it just falls between the logs. Yeah. It's so fun. And then that one with the, the tree climb. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and I never stopped to look at one of those yeah. crossings. That's not, the best. Not one. If you it did, was you just probably wouldn't make it. Take a picture and then do it. Yeah. And I look at that one, and it's an easy bank on this side, a cut bank on that side, <laughs> and a tree with roots. And my brain just said, go up the tree. And just crack it up the tree and fall off the tree and then keep going. Yeah. And then there you are at the end with your kickstand down. <laughs> And how, how was that? And I'm like, that's the coolest trail ever. I forget and that. How did you, how, what'd you do when you got to the one with the tree? I said, <laughs> I went up the tree. He goes, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's funny. If we would have stopped, I would have tried that all day long and not made it. Yeah, I know. It's just like come up and no, just do it. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping your momentum's everything on a bike. I can't stand that snowmobiling as well. Oh, my God. Just keep flowing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you do. Flow like water was one of the best lines I ever heard. But um, that, that Telluride area has got single track, mountain stuff, high altitude. It's got Montrose, which is Adobe Hills. Mm -hmm. And I've done it now, you know, 27 years. And then I have people come out and go, good riders. And I can't wait to come out and ride in the mountains with you. And ride with me. And they're just like, this is insane. This is mm -hmm. Like they almost can't do it or something. I'm like, whoa, but that's how long I've been immersed in that kind of riding. It's not like any other state. Yeah, you know, don't Minnesota's overthink it. awesome and you got your river valley and black dirt and all that, but mm -hmm. you're not doing it's intense riding. It it is. And yeah. I guess just when you I was in Denver, you were in Telluride and you started riding that Montrose. Yeah. And out in California, we used to ride Jawbone, remember Jawbone, yeah. Land of the One Giants. Of the biggest hill climb spots there is, yeah. Yeah, and you said that. You said, I think these are bigger than Jawbone. Yeah. And I, in the back of my mind, I thought, I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. You know, got out there, I'm like, Bertha. Hell, hell yeah. Bertha, I, I still don't know what it is, but I think 300-yard hill mm -hmm. climb, you know? Continuous hill climb. Yeah. yeah. Maybe more than that. Because you look at the guys this big on the top when you're looking from the bottom. Mm. Yeah. And whatever, you know, third yeah. gear on some of them, maybe. Oh, yeah. High and third. Twisted. Yeah. And then you could just adjust your weight to where you could yeah, lean, you want lean the wheel back off a and little? just lift, yeah. lift that wheel up and then just See, <laughs> lean I, her forward and drop her back down. I go back and forth. Every year for 27 years, people, Matt, Basham, all my buddies, what do you like better, snowmobile or dirt? And I said, as soon as the snow starts melting, I like dirt better. Yeah. Know, when it starts freezing in there's snow, I like snow because it's 50-50. Yeah. It's just got to be. Snowmobiling so crazy because every time there is a wind, which is, you know, every fifth night, it gets reshaped. And I call it the uh, nature's eraser. It's erased and it's rebuilt again. And you go out there and it's just like, and there's no trail. You're just mm -hmm. wide open. Where, what do you want to make of it? Yeah. What, you know, look at that. It's a clean slate every time. There, there's a place we call the promised land and it's a giant cliff and you can't get to it. It's a massive valley, a couple miles out there. And we were just like, oh, wouldn't that be crazy to go out there and play? And, and, uh, but you can't, you can't get back up the cliff. There's no way around it. And one day, Paul Russell, he just goes, I think we can get back up that. Because the sleds had gotten better every year. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you know, wicked crazy turbos and shit. I could climb that fucking thing. So, boom, we just launched off of it knowing we got to get back up. And went, and there's a, about a 150-yard nature-made half pipe. It looks like the groomer made it for snowboarders. It's mm -hmm. perfect. And we went in there and just go, boom up on the top and then back off again and oh my god 
So, yeah, that's a tough one. I'm missing it right now. Oh, yeah. Tore my bicep off. And I got a brand new turbo sled. It's killing me. But I'm doing yeah. it right. So I'm here spear fishing with Brother Jim. <laughs> yeah. I might get that sled out of there and just buy another one later. I already got You're going to get on it. to warm it up or break it in. You're going to get like on it before you're supposed off. to. Thing's just gorgeous. Custom paint job. <laughs> Worked on it all summer just for the winter. Freak accident. Anyways, I'll be back. Yeah. Not done yet. Blip in the radar. Totally. Yeah. yeah, two blips over here, blipping my neck, no. blipping yeah, both knees. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be crossing my <laughs> blip I know, right I'm now. already frozen up. We're going to have to have a little help getting this apart. <laughs> uh, that's life. C5 disc replacement. Oh, that's right. Knee replacement, which I can't remember who told me. Maybe it was you. said you should see that. They show it on YouTube. Oh, they saws all your leg oh, off? Oh, yeah. I watched it before the surgery. Oh, bummer. What an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. Uh, both shoulders done. Tore this bicep off twice. Now this one once. Super fun. Yeah. Uh, been shot in the wiener. Ever hear I that? was there. I was there. Were you? <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. We'll leave that one alone. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, it's been a great life. Unbelievable, the things that I've got to do and we've got to do and our group. Uh, what a neat group of boys we have. Yeah, just Incredible. this one we're doing this weekend. I know. it. And yeah, nine guys. Stoked. It's going to be so yeah. neat Add Murph to these guys. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, Another. he's pumped about it. But to yeah. go out and have a nice adventure. Uh, big Airbnb, go yeah. figure. Z does Way that. Go Z. We yeah. get to we get to all hang out together. And, and Egbert, I'm so glad to have Egbert back in my life. That's what great friends are. You can go years and years, and it's just like boom when you talk. No, yeah. uh, I got a hold of Sir and and told her about Deb too. Oh. He was a big part of that. Sure. <laughs> got desert adventure we finally one day did the one we were always talking about where you road tripping but desert? you're on your way somewhere yeah our bike trip and oh that was so fun on your way somewhere and you'd always do it you know god i wish i could ride that wheelies across the and river then, then we finally did it and we yeah. left tell your ride i'd put that back together again cool. in a heartbeat Four guys, five bikes. We had a backup bike, and we just took off across Arizona and did it. Yeah. And then it just it all just came together when it was like, that looks awesome. Let's ride it. Yeah. And 15 minutes later, we were riding. Drive it till you like it. Unload. Yeah. Yeah. Bikes are running. Super cool. Yep. No, that's a good one. I forgot about that. That was Lance, too. Huh? Lance, yep. Yeah. And Steve. And Steve. Yeah. Bitchin'. Yeah. And Steve also did the Telluride one when we had, mm -hmm. I don't even know how many people, 20? Yeah. And we did 100 and, like 130 mile loop. He, he through wiped the mountains. out and got a massive hematoma. Yeah, yeah, he did. On his hip. Paper plate on his hip. Yeah, mm -hmm. purple. And uh, Cliff got banged up too. Hmm. Yeah, birthdays. Some of the birthday things. Oh, there's the topic. Birthdays. Yeah. Birthdays. Yeah, you start that one with the birthday. your truck collection. Birthday parties. Bought nine pickup trucks. All pieces of shit. The most I spent was 800 bucks. And, of course, that was mine. I'm the birthday boy. Yeah. It was a 1985 uh, Chevy S10, which, if I'm not mistaken, was the first year of fuel injection 
And then we had a Zuzu Pup, a whole bunch of Ford Rangers, the most mass produced uh, pickup truck ever. And um, we put roll cages in them, race seats, um, took all the glass out of them, and then got to race them all day long. Yeah. there's a, You should run the video with, of that. With the different... I got the video of all the trucks in a line. But uh, hand-picked drivers, so... You knew your buddy. You can hit this way. You can hit front to rear. Yeah, you, no, no T bone. You had no a driver meeting pit, where yeah, we exactly. sat down. It was with perfect. Larry Raglan. That was smart. Oh yeah, to go through all the rules. I still yeah. got rear ended. Oh yeah, bad. No, but that's okay. You could do that. It wasn't supposed to be that hard. It was me and you. Yeah, our heads went through the back our, window. Our heads blew the back window out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was Cliff. He had Cliff. psycho eyes. Yeah, he came in hot. But, but we raced trucks all day on a private racetrack on the ranch. And uh, and you could have a passenger. So pa there was a whole line of people. What cracked me up was there was a line of people couldn't wait to get in and do this crazy thing with these guys. Hell, you're. I don't think we ever really hit 50. Yeah. But when you're doing it and the doors are off and you can see the wheels next to you, and you scraping see, and shit. You're making contacts. Yeah, yeah, it's it, for real. Oh, yeah. And uh, then the rest of the people who would just be like, no way you would ever get me in there. Yeah. I got a few buddies that said that to me. And, yeah. And they were just, it's, it's a control thing. They were just too freaked out. Mm -hmm. But the other guys couldn't wait to do it. And who do we have? The president of um it was the airlines yeah it was uh ava's boss didn't uh, you take him hill out? no that yeah, would have no, been no. later was, uh, when she worked for great lakes the great lakes guy oh. he's just a quiet mellow dude but he said it's the craziest and scariest thing he ever did in his life really <laughs> yeah like freaked out i'm like good for you that's why we're doing this well, i like people. the themes of the truck when you called me and said what do you want and i wanted mad max theme so i want warriors. a big swirling saw blade on the back bloody saw blade yeah. and i want a 50 cal mounted mannequin I mean, female orange what, hair what mannequin did, what naked we, what running a 50 her? cal yeah yeah yeah. And then when it was rolling, it looked like she was uh, gunning. <laughs> and who was it, too? I think it might have been Cliff that said, I came around the corner at full speed sideways <laughs> yeah. and I ran over her head and went, Oh, no. Yeah. Her and head he goes, came oh, I think off. It was right, the mannequin. <laughs> her head came off right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember taking off and going, Well, and side by side with you and thinking, Well, I was just thinking, okay, so how aggressive are we going to get? And you just hammered me like, okay, this is what we're doing. Through the line, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Set the bar. And if, and if you broke down, Paul came out with the tractor and the forks, and they just lifted your truck up, brought it over to the pits, and they repaired you. Get it out of the way. Yeah, we had tire repair on site. I, had a, I think I bought 14 extra wheels, rims, tires, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! What a blast off mm -hmm. the charts! Cool, and then end it with a, a bonfire that we built with the tractor that had seventy foot flames. You start it with fireworks, a mm -hmm. couple of kegs of Michelob, and Chef Dave put on a display, and everybody brought you know fish from California, tuna, and pheasants from Minnesota, and just giant display of food, and mm -hmm. yeah. Oh God, that was fun. Best birthday parties ever. People talked for years. They're still talking. It, yeah. But paintball one was fun too. Oh uh, yeah. Thirty thousand paintballs we went through. That's what uh, the company that I hired, remember that too? They said, okay, because we all had our guns. That was paintballs were so big, most of us had our own guns. Mm -hmm. So we knew how to shoot them and, and all that and and uh he goes, bring all the guns in. We got to turn them down. I'm like, it's my fucking birthday. I said, bring all the guns in. We're turning them up. Yeah. And we did full crank. Oh. They drew blood when you shot something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went sleeveless on that last round, which was the wide open round. Yeah. And I had caught out in the open. It, just, uh, Greg just, Henshaw told me about that. Yeah. But I remember Jake looking at me. 
afterwards and you know, blood trickles down all both sides of my arms yeah. but it, justin and, and his brother yeah. caught me out in the open that's what it was yeah and, and they you, just took me apart and i stood there and took it <laughs> i didn't even hide <laughs> until i couldn't handle it anymore greg henshaw you got him uh -oh. You cornered him. He's one of my buddies, one of my neighbors. Snowmobile. Oh buddy. yeah, I took goes, him Your down brother it. just reamed me from my ankles all the way Did. up to my neck. Yeah, and I kept yelling, "Stop!" <laughs> so killer. Uh, yeah, paint gun party. Uh, Another great time. Ton of River Road stories and yeah, I, that was really cool. You know, I I think I could have veered towards being a jock, but we just talked about being left-handed in you know uh, early and late sixties, um, and how the redneck idiots, you know, in our world, the the fired teacher and the whoever, you're throwing with the wrong arm. Yeah, wanted me to be right-handed. I could run like the wind, and I could throw f forever. You're throwing with the wrong hand, and it it just got me out of sports. Mm -hmm. You know, tainted me on them. I guess it was a good thing because I found River Road, and we became hunting and fishing buddies. And Jesus, I picked a snowball fight with you once. It, your arm was insane. I didn't know a snowball could sound like that. It's funny. Coming by you two feet by my head, I'm like, you can't get hit with that. You'll die. <laughs> uh, well, that's funny. Seemed like there was a handful of us, though. Tim Hallquist could throw one. Same thing. As it went through the air, the moisture was coming off of it because it was spinning so fast. Yeah. Tom Just Costello. Go, like, good God. That's how Tom was. Yeah. We'd bomb cars. Yeah. And Put it, a dent and in the car. We would all launch. And he would wait <laughs> till that thing was way out of range and hit it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? That's funny. Oh, that's awesome. Snowballing cars, growing up a Minnesotan. Oh, too funny. Our, our mode of transportation real young was the either a car or a bus. Grab onto the bumper yeah, and go on the ice drag. and snow and we go all the way to river road mm -hmm. just hang on to the bumper of a car <laughs> exhaust in your face whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah with your bow in your other hand yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. well it's a great life it's not done yet and then you acquire money and then you think, what can we do with that? And that's how the birthdays and stuff started. Like, yep. I'm going to buy trucks. I got paid back for all of them. You know, you bought your truck from me, but it was at face value. I, if I put the roll cage and everything in, you paid for the steel, and the truck alone was 300 bucks. That was worthy of uh, actually Mav TV. Maverick TV came to Paul and I. Um, they knew one of the guests on the ranch was par uh, part of maverick tv and um getting the trucks for the birthday party me and paul russell and we took the tr the car hauler we had pickup truck extra battery starting fluid he's a total mechanic go find a truck so you go through and go out to the farmlands, look in the backyard. There's a ranger sitting there with weeds growing up through it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to sell that? That thing? I'm like, that's a good start. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you 300 bucks for it. Hell yes. And Paul would get in there, and if everything was right, we'd take it. Can of well, gas and starting fluid, sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Went to a um, junkyard, and uh, what was it? Whatever, Chevy S10. And the seat belts were all cut off. We went and looked at it. So it was a rollover, but barely dented all the way mm -hmm. over. And then they cut the people out. Uh, and um, Paul's like, this is a perfect one. And so knock on the door, old farmhouse. Lady comes out with her cigarette, <laughs> curlers in her hair, and just pissed. <laughs> like, she's watching Jeopardy. And yeah, you're what the hell are you doing up. here? <laughs> I was just interested in the truck. Uh, well, nothing here is for sale. I'm like, it's a goddamn junkyard. You know, okay, are you, sh are you sure? No, nothing. So we leave. We went out and we fought, found his um, uh, Isuzu pup, and we had room. 
to get that truck on the way back we see a truck in the drive i go the husband's there we walk up and he's just like hell yeah which one i'm like mm -hmm. you know you should talk to your wife about this yeah you got all this stuff for kind sale right everything is for sale yeah. uh, but we just found so many things like that the funniest people and or they would be in love with their car and think it's worth two grand i'm going to piece of junk yeah it's not worth anything so <laughs> Well, that day, that race day, had several people tell me, yours is the fastest one. And I'd say, no, John told me right up front, he gave me the slowest truck because he knew I was going to squeeze every bit out of it. And I said, that's just how hard I'm driving it. Yeah, exactly. Can't believe it. Paul's in there. was the slowest, the Azuzu Pup. Ah. But, um, oh, yeah, you had Mad Max. That was Chevy yeah. Love. Yeah. Yeah. They were all pretty equal, and it was driving. And I, I had one uh, uh, Ford Ranger four-wheel drive, a little newer, that squared look. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was Jess's. Yeah. Remember when we did that all pink and everything? Yeah, that one was quick. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And then my son and my daughter started having a little afternoon beer thing and mm -hmm. and i said the track's all yours just the two of you mm -hmm. and jacob goes i'll let you go ahead jess and we'll race it out and it took laps for him to do it yeah but he finally passed her but you know they grew up good drivers i've oh, had yeah. several race trucks and you know oh, she kept me behind her for four laps Ooh, in a sweet. row yeah, yeah that's good she was just cutting a good line yeah, she just exactly. would not let me get around her so and I'd try good. going wide, and I'd try slingshotting her yeah. and everything. She was just on me on each move. Yeah. I had a Class 6 race truck, uh, Chamuco, the big black one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that thing, it was a six-cylinder Roush, aluminum Roush motor. And um, Jacob, I had to put in a about a five-inch riser for him. you know. And I actually put a block on it for the gas, too, wow. so he could drive it. And uh, he went around the track and about the third lap, got it up on two wheels. And he was about to turn the wrong way and roll. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed the wheel. I was in passenger seat, grabbed him. I go, the other way. And he turned it and brought it back down. <laughs> awesome. Two wheels for a long ways, too, you know. Might only have been a couple seconds, but seemed like forever. Yeah. He goes, Dad, that's the scariest thing I've ever done. And I go, that won't be the last time you say that with me. Yeah. And then down in Mexico after uh, Hurricane Katrina, we surfed before it to about eight feet and then i was like hi that's too scary for me too big and uh then the storm happened took two days it started to mellow out and then it was like six foot to 12 foot and but they were really consistent and i go jacob i've been watching it for an hour and there's this lull every once in a while we can get out and then we'll just wait for the right wave to come in okay we're both sitting there with our boards i'm like now and I said, don't go left. That's the graveyard. It's all a big rock pile. Mm -hmm. It's over by the rock and, and all that. And um, I'm scratching as hard as I can. And Jacob's about this much faster than me. And I'm scratching, scratching. I, oh, shit. This wave just picks up. And I see my son barely make it, which means <laughs> I'm screwed. You're not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I got pummeled and pummeled and pummeled wave after wave and then realized I'm in the graveyard and I thought, this is where people make the mistake and drown. Yep. And I looked, and I let one hit, and I turned, and I just took the foam all the way in. I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I stood there, and, and my wife walks up. Is he okay? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. And in my head, I'm going, God almighty, I hope he's okay. Uh, and he went out there, and he just kind of did the high signs. I'm good. I went, okay, and he waited, I mean, like an hour and took a wave all the way in. He goes, Dad, that's the scariest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I go, that's twice. There you I go. go. I go, what would have happened if you couldn't make it in, if you knew you didn't want to come? He goes, I know you'd go get a boat and get me. I'm like, okay, there you go. Yeah. It's like, just think, think out of the box. I don't think you have to do anything, you know. Yeah. Avoid death by all means. So. Well, you're talking about finding a spot and spending some time. That uh, that trip I took down, me and Tank. Mm -hmm. and uh, Your Rottweiler. Yep. Um, that would be the spot to go and camp. Oh. Because it's, uh, yeah, warm water, an absolute 
perfect point break. Oh, man. So you're sitting this close, yeah. and that thing's breaking here. You go left, I go right. It would yeah. peel that perfectly. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. It just keep coming. And I drove down there, so it's the southernmost of the seven sisters, they call them. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And I go down and find it. It's like a, another town called Rosarito, but it's way south of Rosarito, up yeah. the Tijuana area. Um, and then it was, I got, Chad is the one that gave me the directions, and he's like, you know, 0.4 miles out of Rosarito. God bless him, Chad. There's Papa. a... There's a tire hanging on a fence post. Yeah. Turn in there. Can't see the ocean. Just go wheeling back in there and get there. And I see this bay and I'm just like, yeah, they're nice. They're nice waves. And I look in my rear view and I can see this comet coming up the trail. (laughs) Dust behind it. And it's Chad. He he would drive down there just for two days, just bonsai down and catch that surf. He pulls up and he... Looks like it's going to be good. Let's go. <laughs> and he takes off, and pretty soon we're pulling away from this bay that I was looking at and thinking, how am I going to surf this? And we come over this hill, and it's like, oh, my God, that's the spot. And that was – so over the years, the surfers have built half, half circle walls of rock. Oh, wow. All the way down the beach, and there are little fire breaks yeah. for, your, for your fire. Yeah. And Tank and I went all the way to the last one, which was almost a complete circle. It was only like that much, that gap to get Mm -hmm. in it. And I had a big brand new tarp. I went and I found a log. I dug a hole, (laughs) put my post in, and I made a tent. In your teepee, yeah. Yeah, and I had my Baja map on the wall. Room for Tank's bed, two surfboards, my it's Coleman grill. It's exactly and, what they call a surfing safari. You, you, you hear mm-hmm. the name your whole life, but you know, it's a safari. It's yeah. literally going out and finding the new spots and the, yeah. how bitch. And paddle out and there's like three guys out there. Yeah. And the water was perfect, warm, it was beautiful. And it just, it's easy route out with that point break. It was yeah. real easy to go around and get out there and saying like, oh what no are these? nazis what is yeah, yeah <laughs> nice i was guys. wondering about that sure you know if they're territorial like southern california and, and all the guys are like you catch the first few we've been here all week <laughs> my god <laughs> bitch yeah. yeah beautiful great camaraderie yeah woke up one morning it's funny i've always been i've always judged waves kind of poorly from shore mm-hmm. i mean if it's really stacked up I, I can tell but I looked out there and I thought, oh, it's, it's way bigger today. And my first thought was to grab my board and you know get suited up and go. I thought, I'm just going to go down and watch it for a while with a cup of coffee. And I get down there and all the other guys that were there were same thing, all having their coffee. And every one of them's like, I don't go out on days like this. I'm like, okay, so it's bigger than I thought it was. And one dude comes down he was from hawaii and he had the right board he had a gun yeah and comes down he gives it one quick look and i had been watching how how i thought i would even navigate it yeah and he comes down and he just boosh right in totally that's where i would have been screwed because i wouldn't have gone where he went yeah he read that water so much better than i did And, and it sucked him right out to the where they were breaking so per- I, I probably would have died trying but exactly it pulled him out he got out there so quick right to the perfect <laughs> break turns and catches a wave immediately <laughs> those guys he, always killed me he drops in and and i'm looking i'm judging it and it was triple overhead Fuck. i've never seen a surfer go so fast it's it was like those giant wave as fast yeah. as those guys are yeah. going is how it looked oh. he's just burning down the line and then and he knew right when it was going to close out, and he did the most radical <laughs> cut in, and just like a suicide kamikaze into yeah. the bottom of the wave, and came out. He just it, it, the whole thing just took a couple of minutes. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Mavericks was just thirty feet. Did you happen to look at that? Yeah. Oh my God! I got to go up there uh, 
um, when Jacob uh, was at Cal Poly mm. and look at Mavericks, unbelievable. Mm. Wow. That's just, you know, you can watch that all day long, but uh, yeah. to go see that's just incredible. Incredible. Getting phone what calls. We could, we could wrap it, save a little for another one. Yeah, I'd love to. We got a lifetime worth of oh, God. this stuff. On and on. <laughs>